Scorpio singles, welcome. Super singles, totally singles, completely singles. This is your reading for the first half of October, 1st to the 15th, uh, Meet the Soulmate, where uh, I've already got your cards out because uh, I was halfway through the reading, I had a technical glitch, uh, but I don't want to give it up because I'm familiar with it and I like it. I did have to clarify one, which I seldom clarify this reading. Um, so let me just go back into it, go over it, and tell you what we're doing here. This is an always positive reading because I'm simply asking, who is the right one for you? Who is your soulmate? Who's the best choice to for both of you to do your soul work together now that spirit has for you? So this is never going to be your next X problem, next X person. It's always going to be something positive here. So by the very nature of the reading, it's just positive. So, in, and I always say here, I hope you can see the cards. I'll, I'll go over them again. I'll show them to you. But, um, you know, it's not a, a triggery reading. You know, if you're easily triggered by reading, I, you shouldn't be triggered by this reading, you know. If you're triggered by this reading, then stop watching tarot because nobody needs that to be that tortured because um, it's just pretty benign. So here we have the emotional energy in the first column. Then we have the intellectual love and sex and we have uh what i call core values and lifestyle the four pillars of a healthy relationship and this is the emotional column here i read the moon and uh here i think they have a cancer moon i went into that earlier um and i see a very stable childhood here which in itself is a bit unusual that i'm trying to give you something when you meet them that will stand out you know we'll get uh, some stories they might tell uh, personality um, and definitely astrological position so hopefully you're into um, astrology some it's not that hard to pull somebody's basic chart nowadays many sites where it's easy so this was in the um, intellectual position the two of cups I said they have love on their mind I think we have a Virgo personality here Sun and uh, eight of swords threw me a little bit because I don't really see them shaping up to be the kind of person uh, intellectually, uh, this would be a tendency to be negative, negative thinking, uh, left to its own devices, uh, possibly even like depression prone, uh, but I just don't see them being that way. So um, I think uh, when I clarified, I got the Empress. Uh, so when I take that together, I get this kind of all or nothing energy. And I think they're the kind of person within their own mind and within their environment, within their relationships, even though they're a Libra, uh, they do have a strong sense of what suits them. They don't like negativity. They don't like shadow stuff. They don't like darkness. I was saying this is not the person that's going to watch, uh, you know, uh, uh, dark things and uh, murder shows and this kind of thing. If anything, a man or woman, I think they'd be more like a rom-com person uh, or, or maybe a good drama, you know. Um, <clears throat> and they come from a very stable household, I was saying. I think their parents are probably still together if they're alive. Um, they're together their whole uh, lives, uh, the whole childhood. And so they had a very stable childhood. Um, and with the Queen of Cups in the unconscious position, they're emotionally whole, emotionally available, emotionally intelligent. And this comes from their upbringing. Um, also, I think they have a cancer moon, which is a cancer uh, moon rules cancer. So it's at home there, have a cancer moon. So they kind of just innately are, tend to be in sync with their selves emotionally, uh, particularly since they had parents that brought to them uh, good self-esteem. Um, and that, that in itself is kind of unusual, can help identify them. Um, this process that goes on with the negative stuff, you could see it in a date or talking, just in the how, how they talk. The way you're gonna notice them in a date is I think this Two of Cups is very telling. Let's look how they're looking. Um, this is the Cancer Moon energy and how the Libra works. Um, they're very genuinely interested in you and probably anyone they deal with. Um, like they listen and they show that they listen. Like they might say, yes, I see what you're saying. You were talking about that feeling you had and it was related to so-and-so and I can imagine how that must have felt when it came up again and it just would really give you the sense like holy shit this person is actually paying attention to what I'm saying 
and it might go, you might have a feeling. It, this is like a soulmate, so you're going to get that feeling, but it, they might just give a lot of people that feeling. You know, they really care and really give their attention, and you just come away from them thinking like, you know, you were really understood, you were really listened to, and this person really cares about me. Um, they probably listen more than they talk. Um, the only thing they're not going to listen to is like a lot of negativity. Like if you came to them and said, you know, I really hate this place and I can't stand and it just went on and on. After about a minute, they're going to shut you down or, you know, sorry, I got to go. <laughs> and if you're just that way all the time, they ain't going to fall in love with you. Another thing I pointed out before I get to the sexual position is someone that's not going to tell you a story likely about uh, Jerry Springer, narcissist stuff, relationships. I think they're probably pretty careful about how they get into relationships. They're mostly whole. Um, I think that with the Libra Sun, um, they also have a Libra Venus to go with it, and they have a Virgo Mars. And I got the feeling that their Libra uh, Venus and their Virgo Mars is 30 degrees from each other. So they're basically at the same degree in each sign, and they're forming this semi-square. And that's the energy that... Uh, Usually it's something quirky, something that out of left field, something you have to figure out uh, that doesn't quite work right. But then once you figure it out, you know, it can really be a big deal for you. And this would be something between their sexual and, and love nature, uh, you know, their Mars and Venus energy um, that they may have kind of mastered as they got older. And I kind of get the sense a little bit uh, like they might have been a little bit harsh, uh, in, uh, even like in relationships, and they might have kind of mellowed somewhat with age, because this I'm saying this is not a Libra that's you know they're diplomatic and they don't want to raise hackles, and they do care and everything, um, but they have boundaries. This is kind of what this Empress is coming in and saying to the Eight of Swords. Even with themselves, they're like that's enough. That's enough. And I could just see them saying to someone very assertively, that's enough. Because I pointed out, Libra's masculine energy, it's air. And, you know, there's a lot of soldiers and a lot of police, men and women, out there who are Librans. And they can, you know, they can throw a punch, you know. I just put it like that. They're not pussies, you know. Uh, that's not how it works. Um, so um, I got the feeling like their Mars um, might be in the first house. So it could be they're also like a Libra rising with the Mars in the first house, which is going to give the Mars a little more balls to in, uh, in Libra uh, than more than it might normally have. It's in there now. Um, Mars in Libra right now has got some balls. Go to my Facebook page. i got some articles about that. Um, I think Mars is kind of uh, raising a fist right now to the whole universe, and we're kind of asserting ourselves in relationships, figuring out what we want. It's a strong dynamic. So they might kind of went through that little process themselves. That kind of meant what it was. Like what this uh, semi-square is with Venus and Mars. Of you like figuring out maybe in adolescence. Like what do I want sexually? What do I want romantically? How are they linked? You know. Um, do I want them linked? And kind of figuring themselves out that way. Um, and I think, like, as a lover, they're going to be like, very attentive. It's not the scorpionic kind of deep, uh, plutonic sort of uh, intense love like that. It's not the fiery kind of passion, um, but um, grounded and, you know, very concerned that you're taken care of. How do you feel? I think in terms of their uh, sexuality. Um, and, and in terms of the way they love, though, with the Venus... Uh, here, I meant the Venus is in the first house. Um, you know, that's, uh, <clears throat> you know, when Venus goes in the first house, uh, you tend to be able to care about yourself more. That could also be a part of here with this Mars and, and um, the Virgo in the Libra, a semi square. You know, uh, the, the Virgo Mars wants to always take care of people, take care of people. It was a little bit of balancing because the Art Libra where they realize I gotta harden up a little bit and you know it's and leave some for me and because I get to their uh, lifestyle core values and <clears throat> this person I think has seen uh, darkness 
um, probably in their job. I think there could be a soldier, they could be a police officer, uh, something like that. Um, I was saying they could be an EMT, they could work, uh, maybe a doctor that works uh, in an emergency room or spend a lot of time working there. Um, it's kind of like, I get the feeling of PTSD. Um, I get the feeling that, th again, this is a Libra. Don't confuse Libras with pussies, okay? It's just not that how it works. So they kind of say that about like, I've never known a Pisces yet that was soft, really. Um, so, but this person's a known death and really transformation and it's transformation through uh, probably traumatic experiences in like their work environment soldier really comes to mind guys i mean somebody's got to do it um and that might be them because they are not afraid to assert themselves not afraid to assert themselves for other people might be what they're doing whether they're a soldier whether they're a police officer um, um in this is a kind of libra they don't want to steep themselves in all the negative shit, but they know that there's bad people in the world. They know what they look like. They know how they act. They know how to handle bad people. They know how to take care of them. Um, so they're no Pollyanna. <laughs> That's the thing. They're just, uh, they are the diplomat. They are pleasant, you know, but when it comes to their work, um, I mean, this is the kind of person you could see going from really sweet and nice and if something heavy goes down out of nowhere I mean they're up and slamming somebody's head in the table and it's over <laughs> and you just are in shock because you're like I don't didn't know they had that in them you know uh, because they don't beat their chest or anything but they're just quietly um, aware that uh, there are bad things in the world and that they are maybe the one to have to take care of it. That's what that's about right there. Uh, when push comes to shove and they will do it. So I think that gives us something to go on here. I think we got through that one uh, all right, hopefully. Um, and that's for your first half of October, guys. Do give me a like, the thumbs up, tell a friend to tell a friend. Um, sharing I think is too much to hope for but do subscribe that helps a lot I really appreciate it and comment this person you probably haven't met him yet they I could see with this being someone new um, so let me know if in the next couple weeks the beginning of October you run into this personality I really appreciate comment thank you guys